What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Team Runner here, and today we're gonna to be talking all about the Nike React Miler after 100 miles. Just very quickly before we jump into my thoughts on the mile, I wanted to give a shout out to three other running YouTube channels who have very kindly featured me on their running YouTube channel. I'll leave links to in the description for the videos. Two of them I've collaborated with and done videos with on their channel. And TFXC Running Shoes gave me a nice shout out the other week. I want to reciprocate the favour. Make sure you go check out those videos. Subscribe to those awesome channels. Back to the miler. So it feels like it's taken absolutely ages to get to 100 miles in this thing and quite frankly it has. I got this shoe for a lot of you that watch my first impressions, speed and long run test, you'll know that I am not a fan of this shoe but we've ground it out, I've got there eventually, we've crested over the 100 mile mark and today I can kind of give you my full thoughts on the shoe and more importantly show you guys the wear and tear on it and how I'm going to be using this thing moving forwards if at all. So if you're excited for today's video guys make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content and without further ado, we'll start with the wear and tear. So despite not really getting on with the shoe, and we'll get to that towards the end of the video, the one thing I have to commend Nike for is the fact that they do produce very well-built shoes. And this thing is no exception. In fact, this thing is an absolute tank. If I look at the shoe now, and we'll go through it, in terms of the upper moving on down out to the outsole, there is just, bar the fact that it's a little bit dirty, there is just not a scuff, not a scratch, not an unthreaded seam on this thing whatsoever. This thing is absolutely built to last. As you can see, it is in absolutely incredible condition. And bearing in mind, we've taken this thing on trails and we've taken it on roads. We've taken it pretty much everywhere in wet weather conditions and dry weather conditions. And it's holding up really, really nicely. I mean, in terms of the build quality, it is an absolute tank. This thing weighs in, in my size, at 420 grams. It's over four, 14 ounces. It's a side note, but a lot of people can't believe how much the React midsole foam actually increases in my size. I'm posting about it a lot on my Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do. A lot of people don't believe me the weight of the shoes that I'm actually saying in these Nike shoes that I'm running in, like the Peg 37s. I'm getting a few comments saying, I don't believe you, your stats are wrong. Check out my Instagram channel. I'm posting videos of me weighing the shoes. When React midsole gets up into the size 12s and 13s, it is unbearable. Having said that, it is an absolute tank of a midsole, which comes with durability. This thing, you will get the mileage out of it. You will get the distance. This thing will easily take you well over 500 miles. So in terms of the wear and tear, really happy with the shoe. The price you pay is the price you're gonna get in terms of durability. As you can see, you're gonna be paying a fair price for a shoe that's gonna take you a fair old difference. So it's definitely value for money if you don't mind a heavy shoe.
Right, let's dive into overall performance. And this is kind of the juicy bit. There's a few things that I kind of want to talk about with this shoe. The first thing, and I've heard a couple of other people say, is I'm not 100% sure where this shoe is marketed at. And I've kind of got myself a bit of an idea moving forwards as to where this shoe is now marketed at. I've been using this shoe purely for easy runs. I have not used it for any more long runs or speed work. It is just not for that. I've used this on little jogs, taking my daughter for a bike ride and some easy runs. And that ultimately is where we wrapped up this shoe with an easy run. For me, I see this shoe being marketed as an all rounder for people that go to the gym, that do a bit of running on the treadmill, that do a bit of everything. Someone actually commented on my PEG 37 video saying that that's kind of how they see the Pegasus marketed at. And I kind of get that, but actually I foresee this thing being marketed more along that line. It's a tank of a shoe. It is, for me in my size, it is just way too heavy to run in. Like I can't even fathom running. I know a lot of you think I'm being overdramatic with weight. I get that. But my point in all of this is as technology moves on and as we move on with running shoes, you can get everything you want in a daily training for a much, much lighter package. So why? would you choose to run in something well it's personal isn't it but for me why would i choose to run in something that's a darn sight heavier than something else i wouldn't i just didn't want i just don't want to it totally kills the running experience for me so for me ultimately i've got to say that this is where i would place the shoe for someone that is looking for a little bit of everything in terms of performance overall as i said easy running is about as much as i can handle with it and even then it is a struggle at best the upper is super thick it will be a great winter shoe but God forbid you take this thing out in the rain. This upper, I think, just like the Peg 37, is going to get really, really darn heavy. Exactly the same. It's a different upper, but it feels very similar in terms of how the water, the mesh on here would treat the water. I think it would just absorb it, and I think this thing would go well over 15 ounces in my size. And the final thing that I highlighted in my first impressions video is how this heel counter area kind of flares inwards rather than outwards, which is really strange design, because I did get some rubbing on my Achilles in the first few runs. Not that it ever left a blister, not that it ever left a mark, not that it ever left any form of problems, but it was there and I noticed it. And that has not gone away. It kind of went away a little bit on some runs, but whether that's because I ended up doing the laces looser so my foot had a little bit more wiggle room, I don't know. But I'm still noticing it there and it's still a very frustrating feature of the shoe. If only they just flared this heel away. So for me, overall, as I said, I've only been using it for easy runs, and in terms of the performance, I just it's not a shoe I can recommend, sadly. The only good thing about this, and I will say it again, is the tongue. I love the tongue on this shoe. It's a three-panel tongue, as you can see here, and it folds around the top of your ankle nicely, and sadly, that's about the only thing positive I can say about this shoe. So on to the final question, will I be using this shoe moving forwards? Shock horror, yes I will. How will I be using this shoe moving forwards? I will be retiring it and making it my casual daily trainer. Why is that? Because it's actually quite a decent looking shoe and it's actually a really comfortable shoe. I've actually used this in and amongst the 100 miles. It's done over, well over 100 miles because I've been actually using it for casual wear as well. So I've been walking quite a lot in it along with my Adidas Ultra Boost. I'm gonna be getting rid of my Ultra Boost now because they are looking very worse for wear and start to use this thing as my updated casual daily trainer. It's actually a really comfy walking around shoe. It really does soak up the miles nicely. And as long as you're not running in it, it's really good. So that's how I'm gonna be using it moving forwards. I'm glad that I persevered to the 100 mile mark because I have noticed in some of the shoes I've tested lately how a shoe can change over the first 100 miles. Sadly, this thing hasn't. And I'm glad that I got to that conclusion myself and didn't just retire it early like I had to with the Convara because I just didn't get on with that shoe whatsoever. So overall, that's what's going to be happening with this shoe it's going to be used for casual wear it's not going to be running anymore and that ladies and gentlemen wraps up finally the react myler video series so if you enjoyed today's video make sure you give a like make sure you leave a comment below if you've run in this shoe if you have i know some of you have and commented on some of the previous videos saying you actually don't mind the weight and you want a shoe that's a little bit weightier because you know it's going to be durable 
it's better for the taller runners, bigger runners like myself. Um, obviously, I don't find that, but I know a lot of you do. Let me know in the comments below how many miles you've got in the shoe and how well it's getting on, or maybe not so well it's getting on for you. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and I will see you on the next one. Until then.